Brook Trout. Have I got your attention? On this episode, we're gonna talk about three different techniques for taking late season Brook Trout. I'm Bill Spicer, this is the new Fly Fisher. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Quebec Outfitters Federation, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Rio Products, Superfly, fly fishing made easy. On this episode, we travel to the province of Quebec and Wapis Lodge, located 400 kilometers or 250 miles northwest of Montreal. The main lodge is situated inside a 272 square kilometer territory that is exclusive to Wapis Lodge. Family owned since 1967, Wapis Lodge remains one of the most renowned outfitters of its industry. Backbone of the operation is current owner and lodge chef, Sophie Russo. She's always preoccupied with customer satisfaction and the quality of service provided. Guiding us on this adventure is Sam Charbonneau, son of Sophie. Sam has spent his entire life working at the lodge and knows all the lakes intimately. Most fly fishers prefer a well-placed dry fly and a fish rising slowly and sipping it in. Let's face it, that's why most of us got into the sport. This however only happens 10% of the time. The other 90% is spent feeding subsurface. One subsurface presentation technique is to use an indicator and a leech pattern. But when I visit a lake for the first time and I see no obvious hatch, I find it best to cover as much water as possible. The most effective way to do this is to troll. Trout and lakes will go where the food is. By trolling, you cover a lot of water and can determine where the fish will be congregating and switch your tactics when found. Trolling becomes more effective if you add action to your fly. As the boat moves along, use a jigging motion with the tip of your rod, thus changing the speeds of the fly. Fish on. You'll get most of your strikes when the speed is altered. What we're doing is we, we just got here, we're trolling first to find the fish. And now that we've found them, if there's a drop off, we're gonna stand, stay around here and start casting. And this is staying way down, I'm surprised. Oh, 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 there you go. Ready? Well, this is the woolly bugger that I've been using. Uh, we call it a cactus woolly bugger uh, with the, the green and the sparkle in it. Uh, it really works well on a searching pattern. Um, it, 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 because we've got high sun today, it, it really reflects off it. Trout seem to like, uh, seem to like that peacock type of color. Oh, fish on. Yep. Looks good, looks good. Oh, she just spit a few uh, bugs. No, she uh, spit a few uh, bugs. Same cactus. Yep. Yep. Wait. 
When we return, we'll explore indicator fishing. Stay with us. Beautiful. Wabas is very family oriented in a sense that uh, our accommodations will accommodate the most discerning customers. Um, they're, they've got electricity 24 hours a day, indoor showers, two bedrooms, uh, full kitchen units, nice verandas overlooking the lake, and many activities for, for the kids also. So it's strictly not just fishing. Um, they've got kayaks, canoes, paddle boats. We have a dug-in heated pool on the grounds, ATVing trails to mountain biking, uh, wild berry picking. So fishing has to be good, but there has to be other stuff for them to do also. We've just had lunch and things have changed a little bit on the lake. We were uh, trolling before, we produced a few fish, but we ne really didn't find any concentrations anywhere. We're finding a stray fish here and there. So I'm gonna suggest another technique that uh, one of the other hosts of the new fly fisher, Phil Rowley, showed me years ago, and it's a really effective method when you got a little chop on the water. We're gonna use an indicator, and this is a special quick release indicator. When a fish hits, you strike back, it pulls it and it moves up and down so it doesn't interfere. We can fish this as far as 15, 20 feet even, uh, if you need be, depending on your lake. And how, how you put it together is you separate it, fold it over, and then insert the peg. So you got a little loop there. That's how that, that works, like that. Now I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna start, we got an average depth here, about 10 or 12 feet. I'm gonna start around eight feet near the bottom and uh, as we go along, if, if they don't get anything near the bottom, I'll rise it up. These are balanced leeches. And why they're called balanced le leeches, the way they're tied, they're tied on like a, a small jig hook with the eye going up and a weight a little forward ahead. And as you can see, the leech stays level like that. So as, as the indicator goes up and down on the, on the chop on the water, this does the same thing. And we go with the current, with the, with the wind and move. So the, the, the leech does that. It's a slower presentation that generally produces fish if they're a little finicky like they are today. So we're gonna give this a try. This technique works best when there's a slight chop on the water. Once you set up your balanced leech and indicator, you allow the boat to drift in the breeze and you simply wait. Fish on, <laughs> yeah. Now the technique works. Oh, nice little trout there. Very good, very nice. Works. It works, yeah. Right in the corner of the mouth. Yep. Okay, yeah. Balance leech right in the oops. <laughs> good thing we got a catch and release net. Excellent. Excellent. Well, like I say, balance leech works. It's, it's a slower presentation when things aren't really, you, you can't figure out exactly what's going on. This, you can cover water, but it's a really nice, subtle presentation. Fish aren't afraid to come up and, and, and look at it. And whatever happens to the indicator on top happens to the leech. So that's why this technique works. That's a good fish. <laughs> That's a good fish. This technique works like a charm. It's a slow presentation when everything is just not quite right and you can't figure out why. You use this technique and it will produce fish. Well, this, this, this guy's pulling a little harder than other ones. Yeah, it's a nicer. It's a good trout. <laughs> Yeah, this is a little bigger. Nice, very well done, sir. Oh, this is a nice little, nice fish. Show it to the camera. Nice. That's a decent fish, isn't it, Sam? Yep, 
That's a decent fish. That's uh, that's over a pound. Yeah. I mean, you're not, we're not getting humongous fish, but I'm getting lots of fish, and I'm getting them on different techniques. That's the fun of coming here to Wapas Lodge. Okay. There she goes. And, and away he goes. Wonderful. I enjoyed that. That technique is so much fun. When things aren't working, you just can't figure it out, you'll produce fish with that, with the, with the quick release indicators and a balanced leech. There are times when we as anglers get to witness something special. Watch as a dragonfly moves from left to right across my line. I guess sometimes we just can't compete with Mother Nature's offerings. We'll be right back. Well, in order to get a spot at, uh, at our lodge, uh, I would recommend that you book a good like six months in advance. That'll at least give you more options, and uh, especially depending on which dates you're looking at. If you're looking at the high season, then definitely a good six months in advance, because we do have over 80% of our businesses repeat year after year. So most cottages um, will hold four to eight people. Fish on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, now we're trying to establish where the fish are. I've hit two fish in two different areas here. We gotta determine where they are and they're, they're congregating. And it's, it's gotta be structure. With me not being on this lake before, I'm not sure where the structure is, so I'm trying to find it. Right now, we, got, we just passed a little point here, so that tells me there's a little bit of structure coming out from that point that the fish are hanging off of. Now the fish all seem to be about the same size right now, but uh, that they tell me there, there's some really big fish up to five pounds in here. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, this fish isn't too bad. Again. Okay. Yep. About the same size as the last one. Yep. There we go. Think I might have another one of them if you want it. Cactus. Yeah, you got the same uh, Christmas tree. Beautiful. Equipment needed for Wapas Lodge are nine foot number six weight rods for the speckled trout and nine foot number ten weight rods for the pike and the lake trout. Matching reels to each rod with smooth drags are necessary as the fish can be quite large here. For trout, bring three different lines, a floating line for dry fly action, a clear intermediate, and a full sinking line for the subsurface presentations. I think it's 27 lakes that you can, different lakes that you can fish. And uh, you all either have walleye, pike, lake trout, or speckled trout. Oh, fish on. Excellent, Sam, excellent. I'll bring in my line there so I can give you a hand. Did he hit that one hard, Sam? Uh, yeah, not bad. Uh... Best I can see, these fish are cruising today. They're not in one particular spot. Excellent, Sam, excellent. Okay, there you go, you're good. She awesome, awesome. After a good day of fishing using the two subsurface methods, we still had no surface activity. Sam suggested a different lake for the next day. As soon as we arrived, we noticed what all fly fishers love, skittering caddis and rising fish. You can always tell if a trout is taking a caddis fly by the rise. 
it's always aggressive and splashy. This is due to caddisflies emerging very quickly. The trout know this and they know they must be quick. There's nothing I love more than a rising aggressive trout. I didn't even move it. <laughs> they like orange buck bugs. <laughs> orange bomber or orange bug, I guess, a uh, buck bug. Skittered on top. I learned this in Quebec. And uh, you skittered on top and, uh, and away you go. Brook trout just seemed to like it. Very good. Take care of that, will you, Sam? Yep. It's, uh, it's barbless hooked, so it should be fine. And just about ready, and away he goes. More dry fly action when we return. What distinguishes us for our American plan is uh, it's actually our five-star uh, meals. Uh, we do have a, a very good selection of wine also. We try to get people to eat what we have on site. It's never the same thing. It always depends on the number of people that we have. So it can be anywhere from prime rib. And there's always fresh bread, pastries every day. People really do uh, keep coming back for the meals. And once they've had the meal package, a lot of them won't come any other way, even though they can cook their own meals in the cottages. But I highly recommend, if you don't take the American plan, at least treat yourself to one good meal. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. We saw this fish we've just got here, and preparing, oh, he let ah. go. Preparing our rods and everything, and I noticed this fish rising on a regular basis. And I'm trying to, I tried to figure out what they were taking. And it looks to me like small caddis flies, so I threw a, a caddis fly on there, and sure enough, he took it. Now, with caddis flies, you gotta move them a little bit, not just dead drift. Move them a little bit, and that attracts them, and they'll hit it. And there's another one. We have more than one fish that's active around here. Now, the bigger fish are out in the deeper water. We're dealing with smaller fish here, but this is fun. There we go. There you go. There we go. Now, just hand them right. over here. Hold it up for the camera, please, Sam. Yep. 12-inch speckled trout. Just got here. They're in the weeds and they're, they're cruising around feeding on the caddis flies. There was a heavy hatch of caddis this day and the naturals could be seen skittering on top of the water. Trout know that caddis move on the surface and will violently strike at them. It's a good idea to try to skitter your caddis imitation on the surface as close to the natural as you can. This can be achieved by holding your rod tip high and wiggling it back and forth while at the same time stripping in the line. This will make your offering skitter on the surface similar to the naturals. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> oh, this is a lot of fun. This one's a little heftier than the last one. Not longer, just looks like he's fatter. But yeah, it bends yeah, over a nice bigger. little six weight nicely. Yeah, that's a nice one. Nice colors. Yeah. There very go. good, very good. <laughs> now that is a nice little speckled trout. Yeah. But right now they're rising to something, and I think it's caddis flies. I've seen a, a couple of small ones coming off. So that's what I've bought on here, and, and I've had success. The flies used on this episode were, for subsurface, black beadhead woolly buggers, olive beadhead woolly buggers, white beadhead woolly buggers, and balanced leeches. Our dry flies were yellow humpies in size 12, sofa pillows in size 12, and Madame X in size 10. There we go. 
Isn't that something? <laughs> They're cruising along the, these weed lines. They're in and out of the weed lines going after bugs. And I'm using a caddis fly, just a regular elk-haired caddis fly, about a size 14. I don't think that matters. I think that all they care about, there's something on top of the water and they're after it. And he's pulling hard. <laughs> I ain't ready. Wowie. Ready? Yes, sir. You, you take it. care of that, will you, Sam? Please, yes, thank sir. you. Oh, easy there. There she goes. Well, it's that time. I have to leave. I want to thank Sophie Russo of Wapis Lodge for inviting us and Sam Charbonneau for guiding us. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Quebec Outfitters Federation. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Rio Products. Superfly, fly fishing made easy.